All right, there's one thing we need to go over additionally, and that is the ILS critical area. So here we see a small section of Atlanta International. This is runway 27 right, and the taxiway is leading up to it. I want you to draw your attention to this marking right here. This is the ILS critical marking. It may often be seen on the taxiway before or just after the uh, glide slope antenna. And it will also usually have a sign next to it with either that marking or the word letters ILS. So what does this mean? Well, this is the ILS critical area, meaning past this line, then if an aircraft or vehicle has taxied past that line, it may interfere with the radio beam of the ILS system that a landing aircraft could be using. So basically, you don't want to taxi past that line if the ILS is in use. Any aircraft landing on this runway and if there's an aircraft or a vehicle past that line, it could interfere with the ILS signal and lead him astray. So the times that you are allowed to taxi past that line is uh, pretty much any time. In fact, let's talk about the times that you are not allowed to pass it. You are not allowed to taxi past that line if the controller specifically says hold short of the ILS or something similar, or if the ceiling is less than 200 feet and the visibility is less than 2,000 feet RVR. So 200 feet ceiling or 2,000 feet RVR you need to hold short of that line, even if the controller does not tell you to hold short of that line. Because any aircraft that's landing, if you're past that line, you may interfere with his system and cause him to crash in a worst case scenario or best case scenario go around. All right, so that's the ILS critical area. All righty, so we're now going to approach Jacksonville International and we're gonna talk two things different. Uh, First, we're going to go over ILS approaches CAT 2 and 3. Uh, we'll talk a bit about them in a second, but we're also going to show you what it looks like to get an ILS approach with radar vectors as your transition, as opposed to the full procedure ILS approach. So me and Jessica are going to get ready to descend down into Jacksonville. We're approaching the top of descent now. Everything's good to go. We've been cleared to descend and uh, via the star. So once we get closer to Jax, we'll pick the camera back up and see you then. All right, we've been told to depart ODA heading 170 and 4,000 feet. So we just passed ODA, push heading select, and we'll start down to 4,000 feet. I've slowed the aircraft down to 210 knots for the approach for the radar vectors. Okay, so radar vectors is not too terribly different. We would still need to do the approach briefing and read chart references. The only thing is we don't need to worry about references 2, 4, and 5 which is the initial altitude, outbound course, and the course reversal. No need to worry about those since we are flying radar vectors. ATC is going to bring us straight to the final approach fix at the glide slope intercept altitude. So for the case of an ILS approach with radar vector transition, they're going to bring us right to the outer marker and get us at the glide slope intercept altitude. So they're going to bring us right to the outer marker at 1,900 on this approach. All right, so we've been told to contact Jacksonville Approach, and they'll give us our radar vectors in. Jacksonville Approach, Delta 157, with you. Now, I'm, I'm going to point out that I'm flying, as far as FSATC is concerned, I'm flying VFR, and I'm vectoring myself in. But uh, you can use radar vectors from default ATC, VAT, semi VO, ATC add-on, whatever you're using. Okay, so CAT 2 and 3 approaches cannot be flown by hand. They have to be flown with the autopilot. Uh, so knowing that, we have three autopilot computers on this plane. Let's test our auto land status lights, land 2 and 3. Now this will be a fully automatic landing. I'll let the uh, autopilot land the aircraft. So yeah, Cat 23 approaches cannot be flown with the autopilot, or cannot be flown by hand. They have to be flown with the autopilot. There's a high degree of uh, precision involved with these approaches. 
So a human can't make the very precise maneuvers needed. Alright, so what we're interested in will be intercepting the outer marker at 1,900. The outer marker frequency I have tuned into the uh, ADF, so I'm going to real quick set this to ADF. I'm going to set NAV2, so 114.5. 114.5 is the Craig rate uh, VOR. Okay, so now we have a distance to the Craig VOR. Outer marker is on radial 300. And the ADF is serving as our outer marker since there is a location, loc locator beacon on this approach. Alright, so we're bringing it in at 4,000. Another thing I'd like to point out is you will not receive your approach clearance until you're within five miles of the outer marker. Uh, it's a bit of a, a um, accuracy thing with the approach. So once you're within five miles of the outer marker, that's when you'll receive your approach clearance. ILS Categories ILS approaches can be divided into three categories, each one with lower minimums. Category 1 is the most common and has a decision height of 200 feet and a minimum visibility of 2400 feet RVR. Category 2 has a decision height of 100 feet and a minimum visibility of 1200 feet RVR. Category 3 is divided into three subcategories. Category 3A has no decision height and a minimum visibility requirement of 700 feet RVR. Cat 3B has no decision height and a, minim a minimum visibility of 150 feet RVR. Cat 3C has no decision height and no visibility requirement, allowing landings in even zero zero conditions. You could duct tape cardboard to the windshield of the plane and it could still land. All ILS approaches are CAT 1 with CAT 2 and 3 approaches requiring airport special equipment. The aircraft must also be specially equipped and certified for CAT 2 or 3 approaches, and the flight crew must receive special training, be certified, and current to fly CAT 2 or 3 ILS approaches. Use of the autopilot is required on CAT 2 and 3 approaches. You cannot hand fly them. Alright, so we've been told fly heading 150 to send to 2,000 feet. Uh, this is most likely going to be our final vector before they clear us for the approach. Okay, we've told the, the flight attendants that we are about to land. Marker audio is on. Auto brake set. Go through the approach checklist. Approach checks, please. Okay, approach check. Seatbelt sign. On. Landing light. On. Altimeter. Set. Approach checks complete. Alright, this point they'll tell us to turn to 1, 2, 5. Intercept the runway 8 localizer. Maintain 1,900. Uh, omit. Oh, ignore that. We're not going to lower the gear yet. Maintain 1,000 or maintain 2,000 until established on the localizer, and we're clear to ILS Cat 3 or actually Cat 2 approach to Jacksonville. Hmm. All right, so vectors have brought us right to the outer marker. We've been told to f maintain 2,000 until we're on the localizer. Then we can descend to intermediate altitude. Cleared for Cat 2 approach. Now, CAT-2 approach minimums and 100 feet, so I've set that 100 feet, which is 100 feet above the field, so decision altitude will be 100 feet as called by the uh, GPWS, which is a uh, radio altimeter, it's not a uh, barometric altimeter.
Alright, so now we just need to intercept the localizer, at which point we can descend down to 1,900. Spoilers are armed. I'll go ahead and set that to standby. We're at 180 knots. And we'll go ahead and get Jackson International tuned on the radio. I'm not... Don't know which runway is actually in use at Jacksonville. Looks like it's runway 8. I hope so, because that's the one I'm landing on. Yep. So about time we pass the outer markers when we're going to want to call tower and tell them we're on the ILS. Okay, from this point on, it's just like flying the full procedure. We'll do the same chart references at the same time. We're just looking for the localizer to come alive at this point. Now with a fast airplane like this, it's unlike with the caravan where we waited till it got... We want to... As soon as she calls localizer alive, I'm setting the approach hold on. That way the, it'll won't, hopefully won't overshoot the, glide, the localizer. Looks like it's going to though. Okay, we're on the localizer. Set missed approach heading, please. Yep, and I think I see the approach lights. Alright, so we can descend down to intermediate altitude now. 1,900. We'll set flaps 15, Flap 15 and wait for glide slope to come alive. Alright, so marker audio is on. Should intercept the glide slope right at the outer marker. Go ahead and seat the flight attendants. Flight attendants, prepare for landing. Okay, just waiting for Jessica to call Glide Slip Alive. I'm going to let the autopilot land this airplane this time. As I see the glide slope and she calls the glide slope alive, I'll lower the gear and slow the plane back to 160 knots. Looks like it's alive now. Glide slope alive. All right, glide slope is alive. Bring the speed back to 160. Lower the gear. Gear going down. Call tower. Jacksonville Tower, Delta 1157, 15 miles west west of Delta Delta 1157, Jacksonville Tower, fly straight in, runway 8. Delta Gear down. 3026. Down lot 3 green. Fly straight in, runway 8. Delta 1157. There's Gear the other marker. 3 green. Glide slope Thanks. captured. Glide slope Flash captured. 20. Check. Zero five six ten eight. Clear to land, runway 8. Zero five six ten eight. Clear to land, runway Alright. So we're slowing the plane back as we get ready for the landing. Coming up on 140 knots. Land 3 is set. All three autopilot computers are on. Automatic landings require the use of more than one autopilot. Usually with like a 737 it has two. This aircraft has three autopilots. Set flaps speed 25. Flaps 25. Slow speed back to 130 knots for the final approach and landing. This will be our landing speed. Decision altitude is 100 feet, uh, radio altimeter. Missed approach will be climbed to 1,000, then left turn. Missed approach altitude is 3,000 feet, so we'll go ahead and set that in the altitude window. There's 130 knots, flaps Speed full. Check. Flap 30. All right, landing checklist. Spoilers armed, flaps 30. 
Autopilot land three. Landing checklist complete. All right, so we see on the PFD we have flare and rollout armed, meaning the autopilot is prepared to do the auto landing. We also see it on the auto land status indicator above the altimeter here. And Ross just just took a shit, didn't it? It just said approaching and then quit. Five hundred above. Now I could turn off the autopilot and land visually at this point because I see the runway. If this was an actual Cat two or three landing, you would let the autopilot land it. But this is just practice. I'm still going to let the autopilot land it and do it anyway. But I do have my hands on the throttle and the stick just in case the autopilot takes a crap and tries to kill us. Middle marker. Minimums. Landing. Enter marker. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. Flare. 100 Spoilers up. Spoilers up. Throttles idle. 80 knots. Reverse thrust. Reverse thrust engaged. Reverse idle. 60 knots. 80 knots. 80 knots. Manual braking. Manual Alright, we can make a right Down. turn. We can make this taxiway here. Alright. Autopilot off. Flight director and auto throttle off. Landing lights off. Flaps up. Flaps up. Going to one two one point nine or delta one one five seven. Okay, all that off. Texas Bell Tower. Touchdown rate. Right. 134 feet per minute. Not bad. Autopilot's usually a little rougher than that. Inbound ILS runway eight approach. Weber November four three six kilo November. All right. After landing checks. Okay, parking checks. Okay, parking checks. I called for parking checks accidentally. Fuel pump switches. That's off. Oh well. Sorry, no. I secretly like showing you my mistakes. Okay, so that was an ILS Cat 2 approach. Cat 3 is very similar. Uh, but I can tell you from experience flying the approaches. I've never flown one in real life, but I've flown them plenty of times in flight sim. And when you have a good weather program, flying a Cat 2 or 3 approach is really hair-raising because you quite literally do not see the runway until you are right at minimums. Cat 3 approach, you may not see the runway at all. But you can look up YouTube videos of real pilots doing that. It, you're like, holy hell. Uh, GPWS calls 200 or 100 feet or 50 and then you just then see the runway. It, it's hair raising. Alright, so that was the ILS approaches. That was all three videos. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial series, and I will see you next time.